Okay, welcome to our session on Asian ship finance, trends, differentiation, and opportunities. As you know, Asia is a big place. There's a lot of opportunity in a lot of different places, and a lot of ship owners, both local, uh, regional, and international, are accessing uh, finance in this region. Uh, our moderator today is Mr. Sung Juan Choi, SD Choi, who's a partner at INS London. And our panel is Mr. Yan Zonglu of uh, SBDB Financial Leasing, Mr. Kevin Kim from uh, KDB Singapore, Ms. Ruby Chen from uh, Chai Lease, and Mr. Vijay Kamath from Transport uh, Capital. Uh, and with that, SD, I pass it across to you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Kevin, and to Marie Money for this opportunity to moderate this Asian Ship Finance panel, where we'll explore the trends, differentiation, and opportunities with my distinguished panel of Asian shipping financiers. Um, before I introduce my panelists, just want to set the backdrop. You know, whilst this wretched pandemic has hit most of us and this industry and sectors hard, our shipping, our industry shipping has proved to be resilient. And as we've heard in yesterday's informative forecast from, by Vessel Value, the tanker, bulker, and container ship markets has performed well with the forecast using vessel values, um, you know, lingo with good weather forecast. However, I think we still need to be very, continue to be very wary of the still very unsettled pandemic and uh, geopolitical strife, especially with the U.S. You know, um, geopolitical strife. But, however, that's you know that being said, as an optimist, and there is a positive mood in the shipping market, and in particular in Asia, with money being available. Shipping as a sector is where banks and financiers, you know, they feel comfortable as long as they still have the sides to stay in shipping, and this is truly indeed the case here in Asia. On top of this, no one can argue that one of the biggest shifts in the recent ship finance market, with amongst others, the retrenchment of the European banks from ship lending due to factors such as tightening of capital controls and banking restrictions, has paved for the emergence of Asian banks, Chinese leasing companies, and Asian funds and alternative financiers in Asia as a force, and which has seen huge changes to the past ship finance landscape. Uh, so I guess without further ado, um, I'd like, like for each of the panelists, to, if they could just briefly um, you know, introduce yourself and your company. Uh, maybe we could start with um, Kevin. Uh, okay, uh, thanks for let's see. Uh, hi, good afternoon. I'm glad to participate in this value discussion. I'm Kevin, Kevin Kim from Korea Development Bank, in short KDB, and I'm in charge of the originating ship financing deals for, for non-Korean clients. At first, uh, for better understanding of, of our bank, KDB was established in 1954, right after Korean War was ended and now 100% government-owned banks providing strong financial support to Korean clients, but also non-Korean ship owners, which order their vessels at Korean shipyards. KDB is not an ECA, but the bank has strong relationship and co-works with global ship finance banks and ECA, including KSHIO and KXIM, uh, having provided ship finance service to international ship owners. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then maybe Zhonglu? Okay, thank you, SD. First of all, please uh, allow me to express my appreciations uh, to Marine Money. Thanks for it, uh, providing this forum for owners and, uh, and the financial institutions to share their opinions. Uh, my name is uh, Yan Zhonglu. And I'm the head of shipping finance of SPDB uh, financial leasing. Before joining SPDB financial leasing, I ever worked for the People's Bank of China, uh, Cost Mayor, and uh, Bokum leasing. <clears throat> so I have both finance and shipping uh, experiences. 
uh, and for my company, SPDB Leasing uh, is uh, the uh, subsidiary of Shanghai Pudong Development Bank. Uh, Development Bank, uh, and its the second uh, uh, shareholder is the China Commercial Aircraft Corporation. Uh, you can see it as uh, China's uh, uh, Boeing or uh, Airbus. So uh, we focus on aviation, shipping, uh, infrastructure, uh, energy, and power. Uh, so that's uh, uh, now we have uh, our asset has exceeded ten. Uh, 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 50, 50 billion, 50, uh, 5 billion capital. Okay. Uh, so, uh, that's, uh, about me and my company. Thank you. Okay. And from, I, you know, I heard it's good weather there from Taiwan. Um, Ruby. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Um, hello everyone, my name is Ruby Chen. I am the product manager of structure finance department at Chinese Finance. Um, my company, Chinese Finance, was established in 1977 and we are the largest leasing house in Taiwan. We provide leasing installments and bilateral loan and offshore finance to the clients. And Chinese Finance is a public listed company in Taiwan stock exchange markets. And we have been doing shipping finance business for more than four years and currently having more, more than 100 vessels in our portfolio. And our clients are from various countries as in Asia, Middle East and Europe. And we are still growing and developing our business business into uh, different countries and thank you hey, thank you Ruby and finally and not least uh, one of the main prime sponsors VJ from Transport Capital yeah, uh, thanks SD uh, Transport Capital is an investment management and, a, and an advisory firm uh, headquartered in Singapore with offices in, in Beijing uh, in, in uh, in Germany, in uh, Greece, and in the US. Um, we uh, basically work with uh, two banks, uh, DECA and uh, HEOB. We represent them in, in, in Asia and originate transactions for them uh, in Asia. Apart from that, uh, at, at a peak, we had, uh, we had uh, about 30 ships under, under management uh, for an investment house out based out of Hong Kong. And third and last, not and and, and not least, we, we manage a uh, portfolio for them apart from also uh, advising on M&A transactions uh, up to about $9 billion. Uh, I head the, the Southeast Asia and South Asia, uh, including the Middle East uh, operations and ori ori origination for the company. Okay. Thank you, Vijay. Um, if we could just now go to the, the first heading, um, trends. As I, as I um, mentioned at, in, the, in, the, in the intro, um, there is money in shipping. And of course, most of this money will go to the top tier names who have outperformed the names that are very strong, your usual, your usual players. That said, due to the ample liquidity, there continues to be a trickle of new players, new entrants, consisting of amongst other smaller Asian banks and financiers, mainly supporting their own local clientele, reaching out to their respective market sectors in Asia, and providing such companies with the funds they require to renew and update their, la their fleet. Um, the past year, we here at INS have been very busy with, you know, sale and purchases, and, you know, th that, that just resonates with the, 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 the good performance in the in the container and the bulker market. Um, on the on one end, on the high end, you know, we have in Asia we have the state ba state backed Chinese banks and Korean policy banks and ECAs financing most of the large new building projects, such as your container mega carriers, which in many cases are subsequently built in the Korean and Chinese yards. And also to support these new building. Orders in Korea, 
um, which I, I do a lot of work in. Um, you know, the, the policy banks with the current government, they, they form schemes to provide shift finance facilities. But on that note, um, you know, the entrance of the, the emergence of these Asian financiers is really from the loan books from the non-Asian banks, which have significantly reduced their shipping loan portfolios, whilst um, slowly but now more so now where Asian institutions are growing their portfolios. So on that note, um, if I could ask um, each panelist, if you could provide some highlights of, you know, what your company has done, let's say the past year or the past six months <coughs> and where you are with your portfolios. Um, if maybe, yeah, if we look, look at BJ. Yeah, th thanks, ST. I mean, as I said earlier, we represent two, two uh, German banks in, in, uh, in Asia. And in in the uh, in the in the time since the company was established in 2013, we've now I reached a billion ask, dollars um, in financing. To provide some highlights of you know what your company has done in the say the past year or six months, and where you are with your portfolios. Um, maybe yeah, we just look a little bit. I'm uh, guiding no, I, I, looking I, I, to get our clients to reduce emissions. Yeah, we have to uh, mute. Uh, can you all mute apart from VJ? Yeah, yeah, I did, I did. Thanks. Okay. Sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, I think it was me. Yeah. Uh, anyway, sorry. Uh, so yeah, uh, we've we've done about one billion in transactions. Uh, we've recently done a two hundred and sixty-five million transaction for a leasing house based out of uh, China from De uh, lending from Deca. So uh, we're pretty active in in the Asian financing space. Uh, we've recently uh, signed up with JCOB. Uh, and we continue to look for transactions uh, within uh, within Asia for uh, for both the banks. Okay, and from the from the Chinese leasing, um, Zhonglu, if you could if you could share um, some of the highlights and you, and where you are with your portfolios. Okay, okay. Uh, SPD uh, SPDB financial leases started uh, business uh, shipping business in. Uh, 20, uh, uh, 18. So it's a, a very short uh, time, uh, only about uh, three years. Uh, but we grow very quickly. Uh, now our ship asset is uh, more than uh, $2 billion. We have 65 ships, uh, including box ships, bulk, uh, tank, and gas ship. Uh, to do business, we have uh, done a lot of work. First, uh, we have, have set up a professional team. Most of uh, our team members have uh, uh, rich experience in shipping or in shipping finance. Uh, at the second, uh, with the help of our parent bank, we, we are trying to further uh, decrease our uh, financing cost. So we can may make our product more competitive. Uh, and uh, third, we have a strong ability to control risks. So that's uh, the, 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 the highlights we focused on uh, for, the ne for, for the last three years. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, thank you for that, Zhonglu. And um, we're Going to Ruby. Ruby, you're a little bit different. Chalice, where um, the, the sector is a little bit different in the more more of the um, the SME. Yes, yes. We are we are more focused on SME corporate. So we will target the vessel um, over ten years uh, to be our niche market. Okay. So we will support our clients on. Our shipping finance solution will help and assist our clients to raise alternative funds, actually. And, and the type of the vessel is not limited in, in our portfolio. So let me introduce a bit about Chinese, what we do. Um, I have mentioned that we do all vessels and we have more than 100 vessels in our portfolio. And there's about 37% of the age of the vessel is around, 12, uh, it's around 15 to 20 years old. And 15% of the age of the vessel is more than 20 years old. So 
Additionally, then Chinese finance is working with small and medium-sized ship owners, like SME clients, and who owns only three vessels. And we also build up the relationship to the ship owner who has 20 above uh, numbers of vessels or who is listed in NASDAQ uh, shipping company. So the, the range of the clients is quite, ran, uh, quite wide and still we are still working on it and still expanding our markets. Thank you. Thank you. And Kevin, you know, KDB is a uh, big Korean policy banks. And, you're, you know, I, I know you're based out in Singapore, and, um, so you're KDB Singapore. So you're probably covering um, the, the Asian market outside of Korea. Um, but if you could just highlight maybe even Korea and also what you're doing in Singapore, KDB, and where you are with your portfolio. Uh, yes, indeed, you're correct, I see. Actually, as a policy bank in Korea, the historically KDB has closed many milestone deals for Korean shipping companies so far. However, since KDB shipping desk in Singapore was set up in 2013, over the last five years, KDB has developed a global ship financing projects and has successfully closed many international deals. Um, now the bank has the six billion dollars of the asset in shipping portfolio including about two billion dollars for international ship owners this international asset looks like a less proportion in our portfolio but considering the asset size in 2015 as the amount of the 440 dollars for international clients i can say that the bank has intensively extended to global shipping finance during last five years Thank you, Kevin. Um, if we, you know, we're talking here uh, Asian shipping finance banks and financiers. So the different, if we now go to differentiations, um, Asian banks and funds, and like Charlie's Asian um, SME finance companies and um, SPVBD, the Zhonglu Chinese leasing houses are are playing an increasingly prominent role in international ship financing. And in particular, Chinese lenders, which are ultimately state-backed and are able to offer loans and leasing deals that Western banks are not able to probably match. And Chinese leasing companies are willing to take some risk that traditional banks are not able or willing to take, especially when it comes to financing um, technology-related risk. Also, as we all, as we all very well no shipping is fragmented so our lending options to smaller companies while smaller ship owners have typically opted to raise funds from alternative sources and that's where like you know ruby and chelis will come in the alternative source of capitals that are at a higher cost as the more well-known and leading ship finance banks you know an example the european banks are more geared towards larger corporates with strong balance sheets and I would say low risk. That in a way pays um, in particular in Asia and I've seen this in um, you know the type of work that I do where you see lots of companies now using traditional bank finance either bilateral or syndicated together with alternative bank finance or Chinese leasing finance bonds or you know it's it's, it's a bit still few, but you still have private placement. But in a way, all these modes or avenues, it kind of forces the uh, shipping finance realm to kind of coexist together with all these types of modes. Um, and with that said, um, you know, it, I cannot... I cannot um, skip this topic because this is a topic also where, um, you know, I was at yesterday's conference um, day one where ESG and su sustainable financing, it, it, it's, it's so important. And we have to touch upon that here also in Asian and Asian banks. And the reason why I, I'm mentioning this is we have the Poseidon principle. And I believe there are now... 27 signatories 
of international banks and financing institutions. But uh, there's a few Japanese banks and Japanese funds. But there isn't really any other Asian signatories, especially the what I would consider the the more of the more bigger um, players like in China and in Korea and also here in Singapore. So the progress of participation in sustainable financing or even a strong voice by the Asian ship financiers um, may, may be a, a bit relatively slow. So with, with, that, with that kind of background um, and tackling just the first part of what I just said um, in differentiations, what type of structures and terms and conditions and pricing, if, you know, if you could speak about it, are you able to, to work with and to, to offer generally? And in, that, and in that vein, what kind of business model are you looking for in your, in your client's project? If, we could, if I could, um, you know, if we could go there maybe with um, Ruby. Oh, okay, SD. Uh, about the ESG, uh, this topic is so essential. Uh, as I know, uh, please correct me if I were wrong. Okay, this topic is so Im important and has been aroused internally at Chinese. And um, just mentioned that we have more than 15% of the vessel is aged above uh, 15 years old. So, and I noticed the IMO has adopted a strategy on the reduction of a GIG emissions uh, from shipping sectors and aims to execute, it, execute this policy in 20 and 23rd. So that will be a big and massive uh, impact to our clients actually. So uh, we are still thinking and how can we do and what can we do to influence our client to make a change? And uh, we're still thinking and still have discussions. Uh, probably we will have, have to do or need to do reduce some interest profit to make it happen. But we're still thinking and still discussing. Okay. Yeah. The, the, I, I, I think I think that's I think that's right because even yesterday there was a there was a great um, panel yesterday on sustainable sustainable financing, and um, you know you have like ING KFW and then in Asia you had um, NAB and um, Clifford Capital and from the agents from you know NAB and Clifford Capital is for for them is still you know um, um, you know reviewing and just you know it, it, it's and just taking this on board. So it's, it's also, I guess, that same approach that, that Chaley's is going as well. Okay, um, Vijay, you know, you, you know, with transport capital, you've seen a lot of transactions. So how, um, you know, it, you know I, I guess my first query was the, what type of structurings and the terms and conditions of pricing are you looking at, but also in the ESG front and sustainable financing, um, the position to promote this sort sort of green ship financing, um, and if there's taken into account more lending decisions being factored into because of this. Uh, th thanks, SD. I mean, uh, uh, we, we represent two banks, and and we also work with many other private financiers. There's 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 capital available from various sources, so we can marry uh, clients' needs to basically wh what uh, what fits them in the in the financing sector. So. Um, Having worked with both sides of the of the coin in terms of the the ESG element, uh, we we tend to tend to try and fit uh, lenders to clients rather than the other way around, uh, and 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 try and deliver to the client their best source of capital. Uh, having said that, uh, ESG elements do come into discussions across the board, uh, but traditional finance is not going to go away very soon uh, so it's it's going to take its time to percolate down uh, across asia uh, especially given the amount of uh, of uh, uh, focus on uh, on uh, from the chinese and from other sources for financing of uh, of uh, of vessels across the board 
uh, they have to make an entry and then they will start looking at uh, at uh, sustainable sources and sustainable financing in my view okay thank you thank you vj um jong lu how, how is it with um spv financing financial leasing as a chinese leasing house in, in this uh, okay Okay, I, I, I would like uh, to say uh, sometimes uh, the Chinese uh, leasing houses will, will take uh, uh, more risks uh, than uh, Western banks. Uh, that's true. Uh, but I think that uh, because the business model of uh, leasing houses and the banks are different, uh, for the uh, leasing houses, uh, we try to build our ability to uh, operate and manage uh, ships, uh, not just uh, provide money uh, for ship owners. Uh, 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 of course, it's a long way to to uh, to get that uh, capability. Uh, just for now, uh, we based on our fund management and uh, our professional team. We can provide uh, ship owners with uh, competitive schemes. Uh, we will uh, we will examine customer customers this time uh, financial performance, uh, ship price, uh, then design uh, our uh, financing scheme. Uh, for that, uh, now we we are looking forward to establish a win-win business model. Uh, as a financial institution, our uh, advantage is to get uh, uh, cheaper money. And for ship owner, its advantage is to uh, operate uh, operate a ship. So we can help each other and build a win-win business model. So, okay, thank you. Yeah, and Kevin, yeah, based on from KDB. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, for the first part, first part of your query, that uh, KDB follows the mainstream of the conventional ship financing as other global shipping banks are doing at the moment. So we are focusing on merchant vessels such as container vessels, workers, anchors, and LNG vessels at the moment. And we usually point out the importance of the three Cs in ship finance in principle, which are the cash flow of the project, collateral value of the asset, and credit strength of the recourse party. Of course, uh, in, in spite of the basic conditions to be dealt with for the bank that I mentioned just now, the, uh, uh, we have flexibility to manage, manage specific terms in most cases. So I would say uh, KDB is a very commercial and customer-oriented bank under the nature of the government institutions. And in terms of ESG financing, and KDB is willing to expedite the green ship financing area. So I think as long as the deal can be authorized by the reputable third party institutions or green financing, then maybe we are obviously open to discuss about it. Okay. Um, thank you SD, for that. SD, I'm afraid I'm afraid our time is up. I mean, I know there's lots more to talk about, but yeah. uh, on this occasion, sure. uh, time is up. I'm afraid. Okay. So well, I'd like you, I'd like to thank I'd like to thank you and and all of our panelists. Um, we sincerely hope that by this time next year, we're back all together and uh, meeting in a big room somewhere in Singapore. Okay. Thank you very much thank for the discussion. Thank you. Okay. Thank you to my panelists.